Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be highlighting a new model of mine where the focus is somewhat different to most of my models. See, usually I tend to focus on making hyper-realistic models where all of the functions work as closely as possible to the actual mechanisms within the car. But this one's slightly different. Here I'm focusing on playability rather than realism. So this is some sort of um, Citroën chassis. Could be DS, SM, CX, etc. Any of the hydro pneumatic height adjustable cars. And um, the idea here is that I wanted to make a car which has steering, suspension, and height adjustment while being compact, reliable, and fun to play with. So as a result, rather than um, using pneumatics like I usually do on these cars, and rather than, um, you know, pumping that up and releasing a pressure in order to change the height and the stiffness, I'm simply using basically these torsion beams, both the front and rear suspension can be lifted like this, and then using these torsion beams, this keeps it upright and gives it suspension both in the front and back. Now using these torsion beams also means that they can be really easily height adjusted using these worm drives. There are tiny little gears down there, and they effectively rotate the entire torsion beam that runs from the front all the way to the back. There's two of them, one on each side. And this allows very quick, easy height adjustment while also providing suspension while being extremely compact. There's also steering here, and I think that this works rather well. And it does fully interact like a suspension system. Each individual wheel is able to move up and down while slightly affecting the others because they're all connected via this torsion beam system but um, while still responding like a realistic suspension system. Now let's look at some of the challenges that I faced when building this. First of all, the problem is that I want both of these um, two torsion beams to be symmetrical with respect to the center line of the body, which means that these two worm drives have to spin in opposite directions. That's why we have this little bevel gear assembly so that they can spin opposite each other in order to rotate these cl clockwise and counterclockwise respectively, because we want them both to move the wheels up or down at the same time. The second challenge is getting the front and rear suspension to both be at the correct stiffness. Because the stiffness is purely determined by the length of the torsion beam before it is set in place somewhere and stopped from rotating, this means that um, the the point at which um, the rotation of the axle is limited, i.e. this point, needs to be approximately halfway between the front and rear wheels. So we have half the torsion beam going this way, half of it going this way, slightly less in this case because the rear suspension needs to be slightly stiffer than the front because there likely will be more weight toward the rear once we add more to this model. And I also felt it was important that the pitch of the car stays correct throughout the entire travel from top to bottom as we adjust the suspension. In a Citroën DS, when it's in its lowest mode, there's actually a slight rearward rake to the car, and as it goes higher, the rake increases. So I tried to simulate that here. As we go down, we have a... might be difficult to see, but the tiniest rearward rake. And then as we move it up, the rake increases. And the way that this can be done is by using longer lift arms on this side, on the rear, than at the front. So the rear moves more than the front when we lift or reduce the height of the car. All of this results in a chassis which is really quite compact. All of the suspension components are hidden within the floor. And it's actually quite much fun to zoom around. This is a genuinely playable model. So I really can't wait to add bodywork to this now.